Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ellen Crocker. She's with the University of Kentucky Extension Forest Health Specialist there. We get calls a lot of times about this pretty tree, right? And then they want to know what it is, and they like it, but then next year they call and they're like, oh, maybe I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the princess tree. Yeah, princess tree or pol polonia, you'll also hear it called. Um, polonia tomentosa is the species of it, uh, although it's a bit of a mouthful. But it's a tree that uh, can be really eye-catching. It flowers in the spring before it even puts out its leaves. It's got these really beautiful purplish flowers, kind of like a catalpa tree, so just really uh, beautiful blooms. And it can look really eye-catching. It grows super fast. So you think, what's the problem here? We love it. But it also produces tons and tons of seeds that can be spread on the wind and cause new princess tree to pop up everywhere, places <laughs> that you don't want it. And then it does grow extremely fast. What's you know, the, why is that an issue? But it can take over, it can outcompete other plants that you'd rather be seeing there. Absolutely, and yes, the flowers are beautiful, but before long, you have a, a whole thicket, of, and they're very, they get quite tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can become a, a tall forest tree, and it's a species like many of our invasive plants. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, this is a species that in Asia, it's a very valued timber species. They use the wood for a lot of different crafts, and it's highly sought after. So people thought, oh, this would be great. We could grow it here. It grows really well here, why don't we introduce it um, and try to grow it for that same market. Unfortunately th though, it grows too fast here, so fast that the wood doesn't have the same value at all. So you can't really use it for those same things and it spreads. It would be a good idea to get rid of it sooner rather than later because those flowers are gonna develop into seed pods that are gonna just have tons and tons of those seeds and spread. So what looks like one will soon be lots of them. And so I'd encourage folks to try to get rid of that before it becomes a bigger problem. Um, there are a variety of strategies that you could use. As with many of our invasive woody species, uh, systemic herbicides can be a wonderful tool in our toolkit because if you cut them and don't do anything about it, they might sprout back up and cause more problems. While you can certainly cut them down um, and prevent that, them from flowering that year, it's amazing how fast they can grow <laughs> and send up another shoot, um, which is not what you want. Uh, so some Something like a cut stump approach where you cut it and paint the herbicide on that stump or a hack and squirt approach where you hack into the side and put the herbicide just in those small cuts that you've made can be great ways to target that treatment to the tree you're trying to get rid of but not impact the things around it that you want to keep. We can replace them <laughs> with better trees. There are a lot of wonderful trees that have beautiful spring flowers, if that's what you're looking for. Um, I mentioned catalpa earlier just because it has such a similar flower in terms of its shape and form. But when you think about the things that have flowers first thing in the spring, um, what are some of your favorites? I love dogwood, a flowering dogwood, and we've got lots of you know our flowering dogwood, but also kusa dogwood and others that can just be really beautiful. Um, some great magnificent Magnolias that could be a wonderful early spring flower. Um, service berry, another beautiful early spring flower. There are lots of them. Or, yeah. you know, like other fruiting trees. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. efficiency. If I yeah. can have a flower and a fruit, oh, isn't that great? Oh, the best of both worlds. <laughs> but there are other options. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to cut down the trees, we understand that. But mm -hmm. replace that tree because the pro it's going to become problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. And I think we can do better. We have better selections. And you will see it sold sometimes, you'll see people trying to promote its use as well because it does grow so fast. So the idea being this could be a really great way to produce biomass or something like that. But I'd encourage anybody who hears something like that to do their research and think about it. We've got lots of great native tree species that are also really good at growing fast, but don't cause those same problems in our natural areas. And then maybe if you miss the, the flowers, it also has these really large leaves. Oh, they're huge, right? Right? They're mm -hmm. massive, um, really distinctive. If you're trying to identify what you've got, uh, that's another giveaway. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office, and we'll see you next time.